Okay, Doug, John, let's kick this off. Uh, according to uh, one of our texts, Harry Mackay better perform this week and next, or he may find himself on the trade table like his brother, oh. which opens up uh, your number one topic. The bookends. The bookends. <laughs> Harry Mackay debate. Are they better with or without him? Uh-huh. Look, they're better with Harry. No no question whatsoever. Um, you can you can understand why a team might look at a, look at the bookends in the, in the future and see if mm. they can get... What, the, the, the well, they've wins? never actually played on each other, no. <laughs> let alone played with each other That's at the it. AFL level. That's it. But now, when you look at Carlton's structure, um, he's he's so important to to what they need to do as a four line. Yeah, the the goal kicking aspect of things and 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 that I, I understand and I get. We we all witness it. But in terms of what he his first final was actually pretty good, and he could have finished with his four. He didn't finish with the four, but he could have because of where he positioned himself and the his work around the contest, his work inside fifty. So. He's he's critically important and well and truly in their best twenty two. If Harry was playing on Ben, <laughs> how many goals would Harry think, kick if the ball came in the, I'm not the regulation? Sure. I'm not too sure how many sixty times he would kick, but he would have I think he'd get ten shots away. Ten shots. I think he'd get ten shots on his brother. That's if they were shot. if they were to play each other right now, yeah. I think Harry would get ten shots away on Ben. That's a significant amount, Jonah. You're giving. Well, you, you, I asked you the question. You give me. I'm the giving answer. you the answer. That's fair enough. Yeah. How, how many play? do you think he would? How many shots do you think he would get? He'd get half a dozen. Okay. I mean, you got to get half a dozen, don't you? I mean, yeah, even that's if you, that's the minimum. Yeah. Even if you even if you're even if you're uh, having an average day, you should be sort of lining up for half a dozen mm-hmm. or being involved in half a dozen scores. Um, how do you see this one unfolding, Jonah? Well. When you look at you look at across the the four teams so far, Jared, and and we'll go to this one first in terms of the the blue. So Charlie Kerno, there's been a lot of discussion about him. I think at the end of this game, Robbie Williams has to be singing about Charlie Charlie Kerno yep. because um, for them to we spoke about this prior pregame last week, Jared. We said he probably has to kick four or five for them to win. He didn't have to do that, um, but at the Gabba, I think he has to he has to do something something like that there. They're, they've got the smalls that will get to work. They've got the mid-sized players that, that, are, that are pretty good as well. But for me, this sits on, sits on the three key talls for the Carlton Footy Club. And they need to stretch the Brisbane Lions' defence. And that's the other aspect that we'll, that we'll talk about as well. Where so pain, does Harry, where does Harry play the, the decoy role and, and get Harris Andrews out of the way? I think he just plays in the yeah plays in the pocket. Maybe Charlie plays that 30 to 40 out and gets up and, and comes back. And then you've got to Conning as well. I think he can sit in the other forward pocket and then get up the ground to help Harry for that release kick out of defense, which he, he marked so well in, in last week's final and was pretty impressive that, that first half, first half of footy. So I think that's, I think that's more a De Conning Kerno up a bit higher, Harry deeper inside forward 50, the mids for the blues, Chera, Hewitt and, and Akers. I think they're, they're the three that, that really have to have huge games here. Now, Blake Akers has been sensational in the first two finals. Chera has been okay. Hewitt as well. But these guys need to, have outstanding performances, I think, to give them give their midfield a realistic chance to support Walsh and Cripps and what they do week in, week out. So, and I know you you love Acres. You had him last year, yep. halfway mark in your in your AA I, team. I thought he was being undervalued last year. I thought the the numbers were telling you he was the number one wingman in the game. His second half was nowhere near as good as his first half, but he has uh, he has had a darn good year. Mm. Even when Carlton was struggling, he was going okay. But he's uh, he's been fantastic, and he can he can play in yeah. pain too, which is something we've we've all noticed in the in the last few weeks. So for the Brisbane Lions, it's you go straight to Joe Danaher. I think that's the one that you always think of. He's mm. played one big final. Everyone was saying Joe needs a big final. Joe needs two big finals. Five last week. Yeah, he had five, and it, it might be a five again. It, it, it may be a three or a four, but then Hipwood playing underneath that, and and their their mid sized forwards have got class in the air and on and on the ground. So that's that's going to be a challenge for Yeah, the Kane Blues always defense. says they're the most potent forward line in the competition. Mm. When you know you've got Lincoln McCarthy and well, all of those mid size smalls that can take marks as well. They're they're very gifted in the air, mm. even if they're ground ball players. Uh the defensive tools, are you a bit concerned if Carlton do try and stretch them down forward because Well I think they're one then, short and you know that Ryan Lester may end up playing on somebody who's well and truly oversized. I mean, the reality is, Jono, that there's 10 contested marks per team per game. Now, three or four of those alone only are in the forward line. So we're not talking 
massive amounts of uh, contested marks. I but mean, these, these players have... come on the lead as well, and that's what concerns me. If they if they get some pure ball movement up yep. the ground a little bit and Saad getting off half back and yep. and Newman's doing his bits and pieces, and they get some opportunities to come one out on the lead, that's what concerns me for the, the third tall potentially for, mm. for the Brisbane Lions and if they can expose that. Yeah, well, it's an, it's an unfortunate issue with Jack Payne being out, Jono. It's, uh, it's, well, I assume he's going yeah, to be not, out. It's not official yet. Uh, but Char- but uh, Gardner... Was he was superb this time but last Dar- year? Darcy Gardner has a crack. He, like, he you, does. You're going to be in for a game if you play on Darcy Gardner. Yeah. He's he's a bit of a ruthless character, but he can be exposed if you take him to the to different spots inside. You know, forward fifty. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting game. How much of the home ground advantage uh, worth in goals? You know, oh, it's it's definitely worth a couple. No, no doubt. So, and and for the Brisbane Lions, Lockie Neal needs to. I think uh, he's the one who maybe the Blues need to pay most attention to, and whether that's Hewitt. We'll we'll wait and see. Well, um, your thoughts on the other game? Yep. So the Pies, Dacos' return is huge. We get that, throw him straight into the midfield. Do you, midfield, do you think not that's back. the? Do you think that's the right well, I lo- thing to do? I don't think they're going to mark up Hoskin Elliott. He was superb last week. Um, so he was, wasn't he? And even you know, Markov's doing his mark his off. thing at the moment. I mean, I've got a yes/no question. I'll uh, throw at you right now, which uh, probably highlights this. Um, Jono, an early yes/no. Uh, Collingwood's back line of Murphy, Moore, Quainer, Hoskin Elliott, Braden Maynard and Jeremy Howe is better than Iden, Buckley, Himmelberg, Whitfield, Taylor or Lockie Ash. So when yes. you go through them both... Yes, it is, but it's it's close, isn't it? Oh, it's very close. Yeah. They, they've got a hell of a back line yeah. now, both of these clubs. I mean, I don't think he takes Jeremy Howe's spot. I don't think he takes Hoskin Elliott's spot. So you've lost Adams. Surely the simple fix is the best fix. You just replace Adams with Nick Dacos. Mm. Yep, I think so. And if if you need to push him to a wing, then cross half forward up. It's half forward to the back of the stoppage. He's not playing as a forward. He's playing as that midfielder in into the front of the stoppage, and he and he's too smart to get out yep. uh, laterally, or then you know going back towards goal. So maybe that's a another aspect of the role that that he can play. The flexibility in his game is is enormous. I think he comes back with that. He looks like he's moving extremely well. He's just got to get through the 50, first fifteen minutes where. He'll he'll absolutely blow up, yeah, and that's sure. just the nature of coming back after after weeks and weeks out. Um, but he'll he'll work through that and and get through. And then then they're the defensive setup the pie. So they're they're led by Moore. You mentioned the you mentioned the players there. Murphy, there's, there's no Moore, real... Quainer, Hoskin, Elliott, Maynard, Jeremy Howe. I assume mm. he's going to play in defence. That's right. I think he has to play yep. in in defence. So they're pretty strong in that in that back half. But they they have to dominate in terms of the intercepts. Their setups. They they can't be. They, they were made to made a little bit nervous, I suppose, in their in their first final, weren't they? With some of the ball movement that came their way, and mm. even Moore was caught out playing a little bit too assertive in that. So they would have a, they would have made some adjustments. You think over the last the last couple of weeks, and they have to win. They have to win clear clearance. They have to beat Cornelio Green and Kelly in around the footy. They can't allow Kelly to sit left side in off the back of the off the back of the contest. They have to round that up. And round that up in a big way because he's just too effective with and in too too good a form to just be allowed to run his own race. One of the greatest questions of the weekend is Kieran Briggs's left shoulder. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, it's he's such an amazing young talent. He's only twenty three years of age mm-hmm. and played you know wouldn't have played fifty games, and yet he's a dominant figure for this Giants operation. Mm-hmm. Now he's up against Mason Cox and Darcy Cameron, so he's going to have two coming at him. And they'll, they'll they'll throw Lockie Keefe in for a bit of a for a spare, but. I mean, we're going to find out in the first 10 minutes just how much of an impact that left shoulder is for him. Well, the first use down to, you know, the midfielders we mentioned before is, is really important. And there, and his work around the ground is extremely strong. So he's, he has to be able to have an impact in the, in the air because his first contest, which is understandable, but his first contest when in that last quarter, Charlie Dixon ran him forward and he could only spore with one arm. Yep. So therefore, he wasn't able to get the other arm in to create an effective spool. And then I thought all of a sudden, oh, hang on, here's a, a little vulnerability that the opposition may try and expose a little bit more. Now, Cox and Cameron certainly can expose that by pushing forward hard at the right times on Yeah, on he'll, get, he'll get it sorted out. I mean, I don't think anybody has been able to find out exactly what the problem is with the shoulder, whether it's going to be just uh, mm-hmm. limp by his side or whether he's going to be able to have it injected or whether he may not need anything. Yeah, that's right. But he's such a good ball player. He's a he's a he's a clearance player as well. So if he's if he's struggling to use that left hand that left arm, he's not going to be the same Kieran Briggs as we've seen for the last three months. No, he definitely won't be. And their their halfback overlap is, I think, the most important part of 
of their of their football, like getting Lock, Lockie Whitfield involved in that in that overlap run. If we start seeing the GWS Giants coming through and overlapping, then then look out because their ball movement from that can be long down the line. It can be short forty five. It can be lateral lateral long, lateral short. So they can do a number of things if they start getting that overlap overlap run. They set up the ground really well forward of centre. They don't get too high up. So they've always got that option to create those two or three options off half back if if required, plus the long outlet yep. um, down down the line. The the one player I'm keen to watch is Bobby Hill because he's playing against his old his old team, his yep. old team and we haven't mentioned Bobby too much, but he's had an outstanding year for the for the Pies and you know, I don't think in in his wildest dreams he would have thought he'd be coming up against his old team in a, mm, in, amazing, a in a prelim it? in a prelim final. But it's a big match up for GWS as well because he gets a little bit higher and he's got that speed from half back when he gets high and the, the running bouncing element. So whether it's an Ash, whether they try and lock Perryman onto him and just say close him out completely, how far up the ground do you go up. with him? No, no, you because go, he gets people on the back on the back run you every do, time. You go. He goes to the he goes to the center of the ground. You've got to go with him everywhere. I think you can't allow him to go and try and sit back off him because he's got too much speed and yep. length length in ball movement that he'll overlap you and, and you'll be out. You'll be caught in the middle. So he goes to the middle of the ground. Then he have, if he has to he pushes from there. So if he pushes straight to the wing or he pushes to to the half back line and then cuts back towards towards goal again, that's that's his play. So the center looks like the center circle is 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 his point to stop and then from there he makes his decision on. How how far he's going from that point, or whether he's shooting straight back towards goal because he's not too far away. Center center circle, you're not too far away from getting back to a contest front and square if if you need to with his genuine speed. So one of your uh, old bulldogs co- colleagues, I don't think you played with him, but Cal Ward. Oh, how good! <laughs> hey, I did play with Cal. Oh, you did play yeah, with I did Cal. Play with early Cal. Days. Yep. So he starts off in the forward line. That was going to be Adam Kingsley's uh, move for him in the mm. first uh, part of the season. Wasn't working. <laughs> he's pushed him onto the ball. Now, the first time I saw that happen, I reckon, was at the Rat when he went on to the Bont after uh, after half time. When the or quarter time. Quarter after time. quarter time, it was. Yeah. Bont had 10 in the first quarter. Because the yeah. Bont was just dominant, as were the Bulldogs. And he, he actually kept the Bont to an average game. And he's done that uh, run with roll a fair bit. So is he the Dugowie man, or who does he go to? Does he go to Dacos if he's, if he's in there? Can, can you be unkind like that and put a tag or a shadow on somebody who's missed a – Five or six mm. weeks of footy, because you can. Of course, you can. Uh, what role does he get? He played it with a bit more freedom last week, Cal. Whether it was just off the back of him attacking hard, and that's the role that he's got. So defensively, he has to get back and get onto the the key player yeah. from the opposition. But then go from there. But he had his step back last week. He's got this ability to to step inside every single time, and he. Uh, for whatever reason, he bamboozles the oppos- opposition. Mm. He's a little bit rigid in his movement, and maybe that helps him to be able to get that step, that step happening. But that was one of the the best games of footy I've seen Cal play in 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 some time. And yeah, the change has been good for him, Jared. It's it's a bit like Travis Boke in a way, where they they threw Travis Boke out of Port Adelaide for a, a couple of years, and then eventually just had to start bringing him back around the footy because that's where he knows knows how to play. That's where he's played his whole career, and. You know, he, he adds, I think with what where Cali's at, where Tom Green's at, and yep. with Canelio coming back in playing top shelf footy again, that's helped Callum Ward because Callum yep. Ward doesn't have to be the number one midfielder yep. in there anymore. He's fourth, fifth string. It suits him well. The opposition say, yep, you just got to watch this guy. They don't put much attention onto him and he's got the smarts to be able to hurt you going the other way. So I think his stage of career and going back in there has really just helped him. How many people have uh, you spoken to this week that have said, I haven't seen much of the Giants, but gee, they're a good team, aren't they? <laughs> I reckon I've had a dozen people say it to me. <laughs> they're, they're, they're probably playing the most pure football out of all the, the teams left in it and the cleanest footy. Even the game, Carlton and Melbourne, it was a turnover, turnover city, yeah. uh, especially in that second quarter, I think it was. Which, And the Giants don't – we're not talking about the Giants like that. So I can understand the excitement around them, but they're playing a team, Jared, that – and and a lot of people are tipping the Giants to beat the Pies, but we the Pies are the best team of the year. Yep. So yeah, we get excited by what we're currently seeing by, and they will challenge the Pies at times. But on reverse, the Pies are going to throw a fair bit yep. at GWS to counter as as well. And I'm not sure whether they'll be able to consistently do it for for the four quarters. What about the start? Horny was warning uh, everybody at the Giants that you've got to hold at the start. Would you be holding? Or would you be trying to counter? No, I'd be I'd be straight at it. Like last week, they did against Port Adelaide, and yeah. that and it mightn't be on the scoreboard, but what it'll do it 
it'll just put a murmur around the G potentially where they go, oh, hang on a second. This isn't going to be as, not as easy is not the right word, but as flowing as we, we expected it to be. So their pressure's got to be up. They've got to be able to get that overlap run happening early on, not just sit on your heels and, and try and hold and just try and keep things in a, in a, in a balance. You got to you got to play what's got you to this particular point, and I think that'll put if they can get that and achieve it early on, that puts more pressure on Collingwood than what it does if they're even at even at half time. What about your own back? experience in prelim finals? Sean? <laughs> I haven't been great, Jared. No. Well, you haven't won one. No, I haven't won one. But but going in, it must have been quite exciting knowing that it's, you're, it's one, exciting. you're one win away it's, from it's a, a nervous final. it's a nervous period of time yeah. because you you know you you're one step away from the opportunity of holding up the Premiership Cup, which is the, it's the, the ultimate dream, yeah. Jared. It really is. And um, so, so yeah, it's a, it's a week that you're, you're pretty excited, but you're also, there's that level of nervousness ar- around it. And I think that's where the, the coaches and the setup from the coaches is, is really important here for the, for the playing group, even as, as leaders within the group, there's still that element of nervousness. It's a little bit going into the unknown. You've got confidence that you should be there. You've deserved the right to be, to be there, but so is the opposition that you're coming up against. And, Look, we yeah we lost our prelims, and our last three are the the most the ones that probably sit there in in my mind as the ones I remember the most. Yep. But we walked away from those, and we've we've said this, and I've said this personally that we just had it. We had a dead set crap. We weren't blown away. We we're just beaten by better teams on the on those particular nights. So, you know, and that's just the reality of 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 the way. If you if you win, euphoria great. But if you if you don't win this weekend, you can take and and it's not it's a, just an element of comfort. Mm. Of the way you've gone about and your approach to trying to get your club into a into a grand final, I think that's I think that's critically important as as well because I suppose it's just important, Jerry, because it it allows you when you put your head on the pillow to yep. to close your eyes a little bit more comfortably than what uh, what you really want to. So you got your best five players, best five from last week. Uh, one vote I gave to Patrick Cripps. One to Patty yep. Cripps Thought with a was, fantastic performance through was, the middle. Certainly was. Two. You worried gave- about him being banged up. No, he's always banged up, he isn't is. he? Yep. <laughs> so, no different. Uh, Jesse Hogan got the two votes with his four goals, four. He Jesse was Hogan was terrific, wasn't he? Very good in the air. Yep. He was very, very strong. His teammate. Hogan in the air. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do a bit more singing for I us, should, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Canelio with the three. Terrific. Terrific. Stephen May, your boy. Yes. He gets the four. So let's see, he's going to be number one. Or number five. Mm, number five votes goes to Blues midfielder who has had a couple of big finals in Sammy Walsh. Yeah, Sammy he Walsh. He got the five. Was superb, wasn't he? Yep. He was excellent. So yep. the leaderboard at the moment has Josh Kelly and Sam Walsh on five. Yep. McCluggage and May, four apiece. Akers and Cornelio on three. Gorn and Hogan on two. Danaher and Cripps on one. How big a game is this for Joe Danaher? As oh. you said, he needs I thought to the have first final finals. was big, yep. but this is this is even bigger, isn't it, for uh, for Joe? Well, but he's probably going to be on Weedering now. Weedering may be taken up the ground by mm. Joe, who may f- you know fly up up the up the ground. But it is. I thought Weedering's game last week and Carl and Carlton's strategy to have Weedering as the the drop off player mm. was absolutely superb. Now he took a lot of intercept marks. Now whether or not he can do that against the Giants. Uh, sorry, against the the Lions is uh, going to be debatable the way Joe plays. Well, if he plays, by, Joe just can't allow. Weeding is really good at just that little nudge to get you under under yeah, the ball. Still pushing it back. Well, no, he, he does it. He, he does it well. Yeah, like, okay. he doesn't well, he gets away with it. He, no, he doesn't do it the way that you have okay. tried to get it adjudicated all year with both hands in okay. in the back. He uses his body and well, his forearm yeah. in a really good technique. But he does it. He, he gets good body on early yep. to push you under a little bit. So therefore. That's if he plays, if Joe plays on him, you've got to expect that. So I think that's the thing I'm looking for the most. You can't be outmarked in one on ones. He has to that play was a his disappointing thing from back. Charlie Kerno last week. Mm. He didn't change his method. Yeah. He just allowed Stephen May to just get him under the yep. ball or come over the top. He had to use his athleticism on the ground to get him behind him or take him further up the ground. That's right. And make him make a decision to yep. drop off. Exactly. And he was fighting 2v1 a lot last week, Charlie. He was. So. He, you know, it was it was a difficult game for him in that yep. aspect, but he just had to play it out. He keeps and, backing up though. He keeps putting his uh, he does. He body keeps flying for him, and he he got up high to half back, created some some contests there. But yeah, Stephen May beat him last week, um, no doubt about that. But but ultimately, that's what you got to do. You got to you got to fight at times two v one.